love. We're so thankful, Lord, for the fall colors that still reach out and cause us to look at you with wonder and amazement at the foretaste of heaven that you give us as we watch you paint the forest with orange and red and the browns that are coming in. We thank you uh, for that, this time of year especially. We thank you that you care for us more than we can imagine. And not one of us here today is overlooked by you, but you're watching over us and keeping us. We thank you for Jerry today and the fact that he's able to be with us and we pray that you'd strengthen him and, and help him this morning. Keep your hand on all of us, Lord, as we worship you. Help us to lift our hearts to you with gladness today because we know that we serve a God yeah. who is more than able to do more than we can even ask or think, the scripture says. And we praise you and thank you for that. Now we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn if you would, smile at somebody, wave at somebody. Get ready to sing number 36.
praising folks. Thank you so much. Now let's just keep on praising him. Praise him. Number 117. Are you ready now? Praise him. Praise him.
relaxes. It's, it's about got me, but it ain't going to get me either. I'm a, I'm a loving my Lord, ain't you? Amen. I think he's a loving old me this morning, ain't you? Amen. I believe he crawls out inside the journey. Amen. Huh? You're good. Yeah. I said, I believe you crawl out inside. Oh, I'm going to tell you the new one. Amen. Stand with me, please, as we pray again. Father, thank you again today that we can come to your house, lift our hearts to you, and worship you. We thank you, Lord, for this, uh, the songs that we've already sung. We thank you for your presence that we sense here this morning as we lift our hearts and hands to you. We're so thankful, Lord Jesus, that you're still on the throne and you're still in charge of every situation in our lives and of this world and even of this universe. We thank you, Lord, that though the, the enemy of our soul would rail and rant and accuse and try to do his best to discourage yeah. and defeat us, we're so thankful that we serve you, Lord, knowing that you're watching and you're caring and, and that your grace and your mercy are more than sufficient to carry us all the way through. We do think of home often, Lord. The older we get, home sounds better on the other side. But this help us this week, Lord, and especially this coming yeah. week as, as we have election and vote and yeah. our government is set for another another four years. Lord, we, we pray that you would just help us to be good Lord, witnesses. To love each other and love the, love the church and love the community. And to set an example, Lord Jesus, of what a godly life ought to be yeah. in this world and yeah. this day. We thank you, Lord, this morning that you have brought us together the way you have. We may not uh, be together exactly like this again, Lord. But we're thankful for every person that's here. We're thankful for these, Lord, that are on our prayer list again. That we can pray for them and hold them up to you. We thank you for these new babies that have come, for JT and Tully and for uh, Robert and his wife's uh, great grandbaby, yeah. Lord, that's doing so well and mom yeah. that's doing so well this week. And thank you for watching over Rusty and keeping your hand upon him. Yeah. And we pray, oh God, that you'd, God. you'd use this to draw him close to you and strengthen his heart, Lord, as he heals, that he'll be strong and whole again. We thank you, Lord, today that you know every need before we came to you. We remind you of these things, Lord, not because we don't think you know about them, but we believe that we're supposed to pray and bring our needs to the throne of grace. So we give you the praise and the honor this morning. We thank you for these songs that we've sung. Praise him, praise him. We're glad that Jesus is our redeemer yes. this morning. We don't, yeah. have to, we don't have to worry or wonder, Lord Jesus. We can have assurance in our heart that all is well between us and our Lord. So we give you the credit this morning and the praise. And we thank you for each one that has a part in this service and for the Sunday school hour and for Charlie's leadership of the Sunday school. And these musicians, Lord, we thank you, Lord, yes. for how you have brought us together time and time again to worship you and serve you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen. 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 Now we got two more songs. Uh, we, we, uh, and then Brother Robert's going to sing. We got plenty of time. We're good. Y'all been singing fast. Well, they're saying it's good all the way. Well, all the way. Yeah. We've done two or three again. What's the end of it? Yeah. Trey, I sing. like it that way, though, don't you? I like it when the Spirit comes. Can you imagine on the day of Pentecost what they had to do? Woo. Looking around, and all of a sudden, Brother Robert, that old wind began to blow. It began to shake. People began to move. Yes. Can you yeah. imagine? The oil that was spread out over that congregation. <laughs> Bill, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this other one that we've got here. I shall know him. I've just done all Fanny Crosby just about, and I couldn't tell you that's one of my favorite. We would never know. <laughs> you wouldn't have never know. Never know. <laughs> and never will forget. I, I had a had a, a dream. I don't know what in the world that I would have a dream about her. But I dreamed about one night I was sitting in a camp meeting with a tent. Tom Avery saw dust everywhere and I was about to get done, got excited on the front. And there was an old preacher called Betty Sun. And they was a preacher. And all of a sudden, coming back through there with little old glasses, beady glasses on, was Fanny Crawford. She slipped up right beside of me and she said, Son, you keep on going. It's worth it all. It'll be worth it all. Boy, I tell you, I woke up. Tom just as happy as I could be. These old saints that fought us, fought hard for what that meant to us, folks. We've got a lot to be thankful for this morning. You know what? Uh, I shall know him. I shall know him. And then we got one more view of that. I'm going to sit back in. 
Get the rest of these boys up here. I know it's a little hard. We'll space. We'll space out here. I'm going to get fuel to land. Oh, Ronnie, you get ready. Come on, hold me up. The old man said, come on, hold us out. Would you? Here we go now. Let's see now. When my life work is ended, I cross the
Brother Robert, you can come on and get ready too, buddy. When you get Robert. ready, have a sound if you want to. Get hey, Robert, again. Robert. <laughs> Matthew, I'm hot. <laughs> Robert, come on up here and help them. They need all the help they can. We'll warm you up. I didn't know that was that long. I'll come up there and get tenor. Turn me down a little more, Matthew, because I'm just going to throw it. Daddy sang bass and Mama sang tenor, so I'm going to try a little tenor. I'm not going to try Folks, I want you to get this over. I thought about that this week. Everything that we see is her. We had a buddy that we sang for. Sang and played with. He lost a granddaughter. Lost a granddaughter. She had five little kids left behind in this world. Such a sad, sad little tune. And 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 that's going to be. But folks, this beautiful land we're talking about, I'm homesick for it. Larry, ain't you? I want to see it. I want to see what he does with her. Can you lead it? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, he can lead. I'll give you another G flat. Mm -hmm. right. No, not A flat. You and Jenny sing a baritone. Are you ready? I'll try. I'm listening for you. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I kind of want
need a spirit filled preacher. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Teach us right from wrong. We need our old fashioned seeker who will pray all night long. Amen. We need some good gospel Help us go another mile. The church will triumph for long and go home in a little while. It'll be worth it after all time. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all time. It'll be worth it after all. After all of Down in the valley, yes. where is all I can do? Then the Lord sends deliverance and strength in you. Now, when you're up on the mountain. Seem to struggling alone. Lift my name up to Jesus. Let's help each other make it home. It'll be worth it after all time. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all time. It'll be worth it after all. After all of something that's a little bit different this morning. It is in the book of Acts, in the ninth chapter. We're going to finish this uh, chapter this morning. Um, it is a wonderful story. But before we go to that scripture, I want to back up just a little bit. We have been talking about Saul. 
uh, since chapter uh, three and, and four, we, we moved on and, and uh, Saul was converted and we've been talking about him now for several weeks. But all the way back uh, uh, in the New Testament, over and over and over, we hear about Peter. And this section of scripture this morning is about Peter, not about Saul. Saul's off on a voyage. I don't know where he is, but he's, he's, uh, he's, he's not in this part of the story. And we'll come back to him later, but he's right now not in this picture. We're moving back to an apostle that is uh, uh, a real enigma to us. Um, he is the one who looked at Jesus and said, uh, uh, when Jesus was talking about his death, he said, not so. And Jesus looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan was not talking to Peter. He was talking to the devil, but the devil had influenced Peter to say those things. And and uh, if you remember, Peter is the one that said, I will never deny you. I would, I'll, I'll go to the death with you. Uh, yet in the garden, he cut off the serpent's ear and ran and hid like a little girl, uh, scared to death and denied Jesus three times before the cock threw and standing by the campfire. Uh, he was the one who who uh, Jesus talked to on the on the shore of the lake when he prepared breakfast for the disciples. When when he said, "Do you love me, Peter?" And Peter said, "Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Do you love me, Peter?" "Yes, Lord." Well, then feed my sheep. Lord, do you do you love me, Peter? And he said, "Lord." He was hurt. He said, "You know I love you, Lord." It was good for Jesus to hear that testimony three times. I don't know why, but it was good apparently. You could, you could be uh, some kind of a goofy preacher and say, oh, well, that represents the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It doesn't. It's just Peter's testimony. Yeah. And then we, we find him with the 120 on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, just like everybody else. Yeah. Can I just tell you this morning, those disciples are no different than you and me. That's right. They were just following Jesus. That's right. Now, they, they had experiences with Jesus that we may not have had, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And to see Jesus work the miracles would have been a wonderful thing. And you wonder sometimes why they would ever exercise any lack of faith whatsoever. But they are no different than us. And in the upper room, there's 120 of them up there praying and coming together. Yes. Probably like that. Probably so. Yeah. Praying for each other. And encouraging each other. And when they were all in one accord in one place, when the moment was right, can I say it to you one more time? Right person, right place, right time. Yeah. The Holy Spirit fell. The sound of a rushing mighty wind came that they heard and tongues of fire set on them. And they were empowered to go out into the streets of Jerusalem and, and, and preach in 14 different languages. Well, they heard in 14 different languages. That's the way I understand it. And, and they, Peter stood up and preached the first evangelical New Testament sermon and 3,000 people came to the Lord that day. 3,000! 3, 3, I won't reach 3,000 in my lifetime. Probably not. You probably won't either. I hope to, I, I know I've affected the lives of 3,000 people for the Lord, but I haven't won that many to the Lord. I consider myself a builder, not necessarily an evangelist. To build up people in the faith. And then here's Peter uh, in chapter 3 of the book of Acts, empowered now, uh, walking into the temple and looks at the crippled man and says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk in the King James. And he got up and walked. Yes. That little guy over there by the campfire, oh, I don't know him. Oh, I never followed him. And no. Uh, gives a curse word in their language and, and again denies Jesus and the rooster crowed and as Gene Kelly said one of the miracles was because that's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning's miracles one of the miracles was that not a rooster crowed to that moment in the city of Jerusalem that night had to, had to be that one rooster will you forgive me right rooster right place and right time Amen. you got it now don't you and we find Peter now, come back to the surface here in the book of Acts in the ninth chapter, uh, beginning in verse 32, and I'm sorry, I didn't look up the page. Who's got the page in the pew book? What? 1565 in your pew Bible, if you want that one. It's a great story. 
Did you say, Brother Bill, do you really believe in miracles? Absolutely, I do. And how many are here? I've seen. How many people are here? 42 miracles sitting in front of me. Forty-two yeah, miracles. You got up this morning, your heart's beating, you're breathing. Uh, that's a miracle. Uh, you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and ask Him to forgive you your sins and name His name as your Lord and Savior. That's a miracle. Amen. He cleans you up and straightens you up and got you right. That's a miracle. He saved and sanctified you and filled you with the Holy Spirit and empowered you and maybe called you. That's a miracle. Amen. Yeah, I believe in miracles. Amen. And we've experienced them in our lives. Amen. Martha and I and our family. And we've seen them right here in the church. One of them sitting right over there on the side with Tony there. And others around here. Miracles. What is a miracle? It's something that cannot be explained by any other mechanism. Just no rhyme or reason to it. When we prayed for, for uh, Brother Ken and he, he was told that he had uh, terminal cancer, you know, and was in pain. We brought him right up here to this altar, and we anointed him with oil. I don't know what you prayed for. I don't know what Brother Kim prayed for, but I know what your pastor prayed for. I prayed for relief of pain. Been praying for Jerry the same way this week. I prayed for relief of pain. And Ken still regrets the fact that he sold and gave away tools and Toys. And he moans and groans to me when he's doing work. He said, I used to have that, what I needed right there, but I gave it away when I thought it was going to die. <laughs> Maybe the Lord needed to lighten his load. You know, they threw the stuff out of the ship, Brother Ken, when they thought it was going down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some of us could, Martha, you be quiet back there. <laughs> some of us could lighten our load a little bit on our boat and we'd float better. Yeah. Amen. Easy now. Easy. Easy. <laughs> oh, Brother Bill, I can't go there. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the saints in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, A-E-N-E-A-S, Aeneas, I guess it is, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and take care of your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up, and all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas. Some of you may know her better by Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room, and Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men and urged him, please come at once. The commentators say, and he did. He did not tarry. He went immediately. I'm sure he knew the problem. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room, and then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, rise, uh, get up, or rise up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented them, her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Mm -hmm. Two miracles in that few verses yes. in two different parts of the country that are not explained by any other mechanism. Amos had been in the bed for eight years. He was a, he was a believer. We believe that. The, the scholars teach us that, that he was part of the household of faith. And Peter had heard 
that he was not well and decided that he was going to go and, and meet with him and encourage him. And, and he told him, he said, Jesus Christ heals you. That's, that's amazing. He didn't, he didn't say, in the name of Jesus, get up. He just said, Jesus heals you. I'm here, but Jesus is doing the healing. When we anoint people at this altar, that altar, and we pray for them for healing, it's not us doing it. It's Him that's doing Amen. it. The question Amen. is, why doesn't He always do it? I'm going to get this to you this morning if you don't get anything else. Because I have heard people say, I've heard preachers say, I've heard radio and TV preachers preach that the only reason you're not healed is because you don't have the faith. Folks, that's, that's dangerous. We serve a God who knows everything. It's not always God's will to heal us the way we think it ought to happen and will happen. I hoped that Brother Ken would get some relief. Of, I'm sorry to use you, Ken, but you're the best miracle we've got around here lately. Amen. Uh, Amen. I hoped Brother Ken would get some relief of pain, and he did. But can I be honest with you? I didn't expect the doctor was going to tell him he didn't have cancer anymore because that's not what I prayed for. I want him to get out of pain. If the Lord wants to take him out of pain by healing him completely, that's perfectly fine. Hey, that's good. But he doesn't always do that. We got people at home this morning that have chronic illnesses that just could not make it today. Why do they have to endure that problem instead of God healing them? Because he is sovereign Amen. and we are his servants. And it doesn't always come the way we think it ought to come. And it is not a lack of faith. And it's not a lack of God's love. And it's not, a, it's not because they have sin in their life. It is so God can get the glory as they shine through it. Amen. Amen. Did you ever think of that? Amen. We sing that song. Jerry sings it once in a while. I've kind of been expecting it about any time, Jerry. So here we go. This little light of mine, yeah. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now, let me ask you this morning, uh, and I'm going to put a thought in your mind, I hope that will help you. How many other people do you think there were on the planet the morning that Peter went to see Anus and said to him, Jesus heals you? How many other people were laying on a bed or a mat somewhere on this planet who would have also liked to have been told, Jesus heals you. But in God's wisdom, Peter went to Anus and told him. And that was God's plan. There's probably a million other people that would like to have been healed. There's probably thousands uh, in, in the country of Israel who would have liked to have been healed. But that was not God's plan for those people. Right. And then you go over here to the story of Dorcas. By the way, you know, there's, I didn't realize this, there's, there's in some church denominations, there are Dorcas societies, kind of like we have uh, women's missionary society in the old days in the Church of the Nazarene. And those women are in ministry with each other. They do, they do things to help people. They may sew, they may cook, clean, and, and take care of people. And my daughter's church, even over in Dayton, uh, they, they shine when it comes to preparing food for people that are sick or having surgery or had a baby or whatever. And all these women, it makes me a little jealous. They'll, they'll bring all these frozen entrees of casseroles and stuff in and fill up somebody's freezer or fridge so they, have, they don't have to worry about cooking while they're getting better. It's the, that's the Dorcas, uh, the Dorcas profile, I guess I'll say. And this was over in Joppa. It's about maybe 15 or 20 miles from Lydda. Uh, there was this disciple named Tabitha or Dorcas who always was doing good and helping the poor, the scripture says. And about that time, she became sick and died. Apparently she died quickly. Yeah. And, and uh, they sent these two disciples over to, to uh, Lydda to get Peter 
And he said, we need you to come now. And Peter went now. I, I actually, the first time I read through this, I actually thought, did they know that, did they tell Peter she was dead? Or that she was sick? I think they probably told, they knew when they went that she was dead, obviously. Um, surely to goodness that word had come out. And the Bible says Peter went with them. And everything I read about this scripture in my, in my commentaries this week said, Peter went immediately. He did not tarry. As soon as he knew there was a need, he, he went over there. And the widows are all standing around him crying and showing him the robes and the clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with him. They loved her. She loved people. She was meeting the needs of people. And here this church in, in Joppa has lost a pillar in the community of faith. It, it's it's a, a dramatic thing that's taking place here. When you read it on the surface, you don't realize the effect that this is having on the church. We've lost people here. We've, in, 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 Martha and I have talked uh, several times over the years about how many people have passed on and gone to heaven since 92 when we came back here um, from Haiti. And it's, a, it's an astounding number of people that are no longer with us. And some of us that were younger then are now becoming the, the gray-haired pillars in the church. Well, some of the women aren't becoming gray-haired. The, the, God still works miracles, doesn't he? But the men are all becoming bald and chubby and gray-haired. And we look around us and we, 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 we miss people that are no longer with us. People of faith, faithful men and women who served the Lord here for most of my lifetime uh, until the last several years. And Peter goes to them and he sees the effect this is having. And verse 40 is, is key. Uh, it says, Peter sent them all out of the room. I believe he's there by himself. Yes. I have no reason to think anybody's in that room but him and, and Dorcas. And what does it say he did? He got on his knees and he prayed. When you don't know what to do, folks, <clears throat> find a place of prayer Amen. somehow. When there is no answer in sight, find a place of prayer and talk to the Lord. When you need a miracle, Amen. find a place of prayer. Peter didn't just send them out of the room and walk over there and look at her and say, Tabitha, get up from there. It would have been almost foolish. He had to get the mind of the Lord. He's there. This woman's dead, and they're not sure. He's not sure what he ought to do, maybe, and how to do it. So, what does he do? The wise thing. He prayed. And then the Bible says that he spoke to her. Turning towards the dead woman. Can I just say it to you this morning? She was not passed out. She's dead. D-E-D-D. -E -D -D, dead. We, we, we say at the hospital certain times, certain situations. D-R-T. Dead right there. There is no doubt that she's dead. There was no doubt that Lazarus was dead. That's why Jesus waited and let him be in the grave till he started to smell. And then he worked a miracle. That's right. That's right. That's right. There's no doubt. The, the widow of Nain's son, as they're carrying him through the cities of Jerusalem, or wherever they were, was, was dead, her only child, and Jesus raised him. Back to my previous statement. I wonder how many other mothers would have liked to have had their child or loved one resurrected that day. But it was God's plan to continue to take care of that mother. Amen. Now, they all had to die again. Yeah. You know, we, we sometimes say, well, it's appointed unto man once to die and after death to judge. Well, that's right. That's right. That's exactly right. It's appointed unto you once to die, but Jesus in his wisdom... And God in his wisdom let some people do it twice. Yeah. How about that? I don't know why or how, but that's what the word says. They were not eternal at that point. 
And Dorcas would have to die again too. Yes. The point of that verse of scripture that we need to be careful we don't lift out of context is it's appointed and a man wants to die. And after death, the judgment. That's the important part of that. We're going to all die. Uh, even, if you, even if you take Jesus and Enoch and Elijah and put them into the uh, maybe 12 billion people that have lived on this planet in its history, it still averages out to 100% when you round it off. Yeah. It just does. We're going to all die if Jesus tarries. We're all going to the way of the grave unless he comes back and takes us in the air. Amen. So just get over the fact that you ain't gonna live. For, you, you're not gonna live forever. Don't you love me now? That's a real downer, isn't it? Well, I was planning on going to the beach this summer. Well, you may still get to go, but if he takes you home, he'll have a better beach for you up there Amen. if you're serving him. <laughs> Tabitha, turning towards the dead woman, he said, "Tabitha, get up." Oh, wouldn't you like to have a video camera in the corner? Yes. My mom always said, be a gnat in the corner or a fly on the wall and see her open her eyes. I've been aggravated with it myself. Pull me back from the other side. Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Well, he wasn't there when she laid down. And now there's this man in her room. I imagine she was a little bit surprised. I don't know if she knew Peter or not. She may have never met him before. There's a strange man in her room, and I just woke up from the dead. <laughs> Some of you need to wake up from the dead this morning. Amen. No, I'm kidding. Uh, she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up, and he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Do you know the best thing you can do for some people in life is this right here? Stand up here, Denise. Just what I did. Help them up. Lift them up. Doesn't mean you need to give them a million dollars or even one dollar. But spiritually, lift each other up, Amen. folks. We need to be Amen. doing that. Bless you, Denise. As Gene Kelly said, you, you know, the church is the only bunch that shoots its own wounded. You know. We just put them out of misery. Well, that won't fly. God won't bless it, and it won't work. No. But that will. Amen. Amen. Amen? Pray for each other. Love each other. Encourage each other. I'm thankful we have a church that already does that, and I mean that sincerely. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Let me tell you all something about your church board. For those of you that are watching my live stream, uh, you have deacons maybe in your church or, or, or an administrative committee or something. We call it our church board in our church. And we have a church board, and we've had it this way for years and years. If I go to them and I say, you know, we, we, we've got a situation here that, that we need to address 99.9 .9 times out of 100, one of our board members will say to me before I tell them what I want them to do, what can we do to help? What can we do? How should we do it? It's rare that I have to push and shove. And, I mean, really rare that I have to say, folks, we got to do something. Yes, we've been burned. And churches that are people that are watching us this morning on live stream, they'll have the same experience. They won't always use the money you give them the way they should. But we did the right thing. Amen. We took care of things. And, and uh, we've learned some lessons. And sometimes now we pay the light bill at the office instead of giving them money. Yeah. You see? Uh, and we need to be wise. And sometimes we need to save people from themselves. Yes. Amen. Amen. But we've got a wonderful board that loves to help people. And, and I, I, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen it be stingy. Because, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to use uh, uh, Miss Sierra back there, you know. She went, she's in nursing school and, and she needed a little tuition money. And can I tell that, Sierra? It's a blessing. And, and I went to the board and I said, I said, you know, this, she's going to nursing school and she's going to graduate and she'll be tithing and working and, 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 and we need to help her a little bit. Now the pressure's on her, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, and I was hoping for $500. 
I really was. I was, I was I'd be thrilled with five hundred dollars for it. We took her a check that night for a thousand dollars because your board stepped up and said we need to do more. <coughs> thank God. Thank you, board, and thank you, church, for your faithfulness because that's the way we were able to do that. So he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet, and then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them. She's still dead, but I'm not alive. Can you imagine? You talk about joy breaking out. This was a loved woman. They thought the world of her. Their hearts were broken that she died, and they come back in that room, and here she is standing up. What can we do now to help somebody else? It's a miracle. Listen to me this morning. When we let the Holy Spirit work among us the way He wants to do, we will see miracle after miracle after miracle Amen. amongst us. You say, you're going to start a healing ministry? I don't, I'm not the healer. I, I, I pray for people and anoint people nine times out of ten when they request it. I, don't go, I rarely go to somebody and say, would it be okay if we anointed you with oil and prayed for you today? I want that person to want that. Yes. Amen. And when they do, and it's God's will, then we see something that we can't explain by any other method. It had to be God. Amen. But God, Ken would be gone probably already. Some of the rest of us that have had heart surgery and different problems and, and been sick with this and that would be gone Amen. if it weren't for God Amen. and His work in our lives. Amen. Well, I was just dumb enough when I had my heart surgery. I, Dr. Evans was a little bit irritated with me after I got that CT scan. He said, now look what you've done. <laughs> and I said, well... I'm kind of glad that we found it, Doc. You know, we can get it fixed now, you know. Um, now look what you've done. And I went to surgery just with the attitude, I'm going to do fine. I'll, get, I'll, I'll, either, I'll either come home or go to heaven. I'm going home either way. And I'm just going to do just fine. And it's in God's hands. And the minute that they were giving me the medicine to go to sleep, I just said, here I am, Lord. And I just went into it with a positive attitude and, and came home a day early, and then my wife started in. She wouldn't leave me alone, A alone, A L O N E. Uh, she 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 was afraid to go to work and all that. And I thought, well, if I die while you're going to work, that's okay. I've, I he's brought me this far. I think he'll bring me all the way. You know. So that's why I said this morning. Some of you asked me, said, "How are you doing?" I said, "Well, nobody's told me otherwise. I guess I'm I'm not on the obituary page." I'm still upright and ready to, ready to serve and trust the Lord. Miracles. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time. But look at verse 42. This became known all over Joppa. And many people believed in the Lord. Don't be afraid to give God the credit. Can I tell you what the penalty is for not giving God the credit? His name was Herod. He gave a speech. It was a great oration. I mean, they'd never heard anything like this in their lives. And they said, oh, the voice of a God. He was so wonderful in his public speaking. He failed to give God credit and was smitten and eaten by worms in their very presence. Don't be afraid to give the Lord the credit. For goodness sakes, don't deny it. Now, we ought not to cast our pearls before, uh, before swine, and there are times when I have been quiet about certain things just because I know what the reaction is going to be, and I didn't want the reaction to affect somebody else negatively. So I just kept quiet. But I believe we ought to praise the Lord and give Him the credit and the honor when He steps into our lives in a way that is not explainable Amen. otherwise. Amen. I still believe in divine healing. I still believe in the miracles that are recorded in this book. 
I knew a professor that said he did not believe in the miracles of Jesus as recorded in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I just shook my head. Right. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that knows exactly what we need Amen. when we need it? Stand with me, please. Yes. to speak to a young man who almost died from an overdose. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I felt impressed to go talk to him. And I stepped into the, to the room where he was and I just looked at him and I said, Son, God is not done with you. Right. I, know, I know this boy's family. They're good people. And I said, God's not done with you. There is something you are to do or you would not be here. Amen. Because 45 minutes before, he had almost stopped breathing. And, and, and he looked at me, and I said, I'm not telling you that to make you feel bad. I'm telling you that because the Lord's asked me to tell you this. You've got something good to do in this world, Amen. or you would not be here at this moment. He said, I think I need to change the way that I'm living. Amen. So pray for Rusty. Yeah. The Lord does have something for him to do. Yes. Uh, I, I, I I'm so glad that he did well. 20% chance of making it. And he's doing great. Aren't you glad? Amen. Well, the Lord bless. Amen. That's good. You can do that. Give the Lord the credit. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and keep you whole and well. The candy bag is ready. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.